My husband's blind, and this is the moment I knew I wanted to marry him. Wait, this right now is the moment? No. <laughs> okay, good. Just checking. So before we dive into this episode, Matthew, of course we have to do our due diligence. This is part, like, I don't even know what of our relationship story. So why don't you direct people to where they can see all, everything leading up to this point. Okay, so the entire series is right here. You can catch up on how we met when we moved in together, why we almost broke up, all those things. <laughs> all those exciting things, which brings us to this moment. We have now moved in together. Do I have chocolate in my teeth? <laughs> Wait, you're asking your blind husband? Hold on, look at me. I can smell chocolate. You can smell chocolate. <laughs> no, I just want to make sure it's not in my teeth because I did not check. <laughs> I will slowly clean them yeah. with my tongue over here while you talk. Okay, so, oh, I'm talking. Okay, so today we're gonna discuss we're living together now. I am no longer living in Canada. I'm going through the immigration process. I cannot even cross the border to go back home for anything, not even pick up any of my belongings, because as we know, Matthew put all of those into storage, and what he didn't put into storage, apparently, he threw out or donated to Goodwill. Donated. <laughs> to better causes. <laughs> yes. So that brings us to this stage of our lives. We're now living together. What was yeah. that like? How did that feel? And how did we arrive at the moment when we knew for sure like that we wanted to be in it for the long haul? And I think I should just mention at this point that I already knew. I, I knew. I was the one who wrote in my journal after date numero uno that I think I just met my husband. And I, that feeling never once for me did it waver. And guess what? Spoiler alert. It still has not wavered. Okay, this day. I was yeah. gonna ask. <laughs> yeah, so I think for you, your journey was a little more organic and maybe quote normal. So why don't you tell us about that? Yeah, for me, it was not a moment. For you, it was a moment, which is really cool. Yeah, for it really me, was. Yeah. It was the slow <laughs> realization. <laughs> it was like a sunrise. <laughs> oh, that is so sweet. Yeah. Okay, I was like, it's like, at first it was funny, then it was romantic. That the sun is probably going to rise as, it, as the light slowly mm -hmm. invades more and more of the <laughs> Wait, darkness. Wait, no, invades? Invades, encompasses. Ah, envelops, warms Envelops, the that's body, a better word, envelops. Hugs, yeah. holds, all those good things. Yeah, because my dad had said, you really want to know someone through at least one full year. All the seasons. And all the holidays. All the holidays. Can we talk about those first holidays? holidays. Yeah. We are Christmas lovers. We yeah. love the holidays. But I want to tell you, I moved in October 1st, as we have established. And November comes around. First of all, Thanksgiving in Canada, October. But American Thanksgiving, you left me. It's because I already had a trip planned. He but already had his tickets booked and when you wanted to bring me along with you what did your dad say <laughs> he said he said you've already brought out a few let's <laughs> let's let's wait till next year let's see if this one's still around in a year before yeah. you bring him out yeah thankfully my grandmother lives in washington state so i had uh, thanksgiving with my family with my grandma so that was fine and then um it wasn't until I think another year that I actually did finally meet your dad, but yeah, he yeah. was like, "Oh, this one's stuck around." <laughs> yes. Okay. Yeah. You can bring him out. I know. So we had Thanksgiving apart, then that Christmas, which was our first together. couple days apart, of course, since the day we met, really. Yeah. Um, so I that was a beautiful reunion at, back together, and then we had Christmas, in which we, we love Christmas. We love Christmas. We went to New York City the week oh, before that's Christmas. Right. Amazing that trip was together. Beautiful. So memorable. And we came home three days before Christmas, absolutely had to get a tree. So we bought, I think was one of the last trees left in this parking lot. It was nine feet tall. It and was nine a, feet wide. <laughs> yes. And as you remember from our previous episodes that we lived in a windowless shoebox and this Christmas tree covered the one window. Well, our, our apartment at yeah. its widest was about nine feet wide. So imagine this tree. We had the tree. chop part of the tree off just so the door would o still open. I'm pretty sure there's a clip I'm gonna insert here because I know we took a photo of it. It was crazy. We had to chop this tree down and you still couldn't fully open the front door <laughs> to get in. And we cut off the bottom of that trunk and it's still an ornament we put out every year. It says Matthew and Paul, Christmas 2016. Yeah. Our first Christmas. And that first year together just flew by. It I mean, really it went did. quickly and it went 
slowly in this beautiful way where we were doing walks every day in the that summers we would do or anytime there's good weather we would do picnics yeah we we and when it was bad weather one of my favorite things is we would do living room picnics we would go out get all of our favorite picnic foods bring them home and we didn't have a dining table we did not have a dining table. We just had a couch and a desk. So we would lay out a blanket on the living room floor and set up a picnic on the living room floor. Honestly, these are some of my favorite early memories of our relationship because we were just making it work. It was so much fun. It really yeah. was. It was so special. Yeah. And we also started doing something very interesting very early on, Matthew. And this was something that you introduced to me. And that what? was the Gottmans. Ah, uh, yes. So... <laughs> John and Julie Gottman yeah. are well-known relationship experts actually based here in Seattle. And one day I pulled off my bookshelf one of their books, I think called How to Make... I think it was Why Marriages Succeed, Succeed or, or Fail. Fail. And keep in mind, this was, I want to say, four or five, less than six months into our relationship. Yeah. And he is, we are now reading but I that said, book. I said, this is just a great relationship book. Yeah. We're living together. Not saying we're gonna get married, you know. Oh, but Matthew, as far as I'm concerned, you were already like my my husband, <laughs> secretly in my head. So this book did not scare me. It really just actually made I loved it. I was like, oh good, oh good. He sees me as marriage material. <laughs> but I said this is great relationship advice yeah. and communication styles. We have been like forced in mm -hmm. on each other very quickly. Yeah. This could be useful. This could help. Some of my previous relationships didn't go well because of communication, other issues. So I was like, let's start. I wanted to start this one off right. Yeah. Or at least yeah. with as many good tools in place so that you would have a better chance than my previous relationship. And what was cool is I think we were both at this time in our lives where we really valued self-improvement. And we knew that from day one. Many of our first date conversations were about self-improvement and our personal quest to become better people. And I think that's why this book... Uh, if we were both interested in becoming better individuals as a couple, it made so much sense that we would want to strengthen the, the couple and make sure that our relationship was super healthy. So I was 100% on board. Yeah, that is extremely important to me, is being with someone who is constantly willing and ready uh, to improve yes. and not just settle or coast. Absolutely. I think because we knew we discussed this on the first date, I feel like that was the biggest chunk of information for me was your skills as a communicator and your desire to be a better person was like, oh, this is the one for me because this is these are the things I want. And that is like that is what I realized I was looking for more than anything else, more than looks, more than money. We didn't have any money. <laughs> you have looks, but I couldn't even fully appreciate them. No. And it was about your strength of character. That's what it really from yeah. day one. And so that first year together, yeah, like flew by and then a second year. Yeah, we celebrated our first year together and that was on June 10th, 2017. And then the next year flew by pretty fast. What I mean, did like we even do? <laughs> what did we do? I mean, we did so much. We were so busy all the time. You were, I was, I was painting, doing commissions. I was showing my work in galleries. You were teaching. You were a fitness instructor. We had all these different things going on. We were so busy and creative all the time. And that was another thing that we started from the very beginning is like we were creative collaborators from almost the very, very, very beginning yeah. of this whole journey. And so we were always involved in each other's work lives and sort of building each other up. And, and, and at this time, during that, these two years that we're covering, you were teaching violin primarily. That is where most of our money was coming from. Very little money was coming through my paintings, but I was making a teensy weensy bit. And so it wasn't like I wasn't contributing at all, but it did take a while for my art career to become yeah. what it is today. And it wouldn't be there if it weren't for you. So for me, I would say it was that two, two and a half years, the slow dawning, the slow realization, seeing you through multiple seasons, more than once, yeah. seeing how family interacted with our, our dynamic, all these things. I got and to also see it all. Fighting. 
like having arguments. Mm -hmm. Like any couple, we had disagreements and we were working together. We were in close quarters together all the time. We didn't get break, long breaks from each other. So I do feel that we had to confront those uncomfortable moments, but because we had the skills from those books and we've been really working on ourselves as human beings and we have our own individual therapists at this time as well, yeah. I feel like we were just able to move through those arguments. And let's, it's not about whether or not you argue, it's how you have your arguments that sort of determines the healthiness of the relationship. <laughs> yeah. So I think after two, two and a half years, I knew like, okay, this, this is good. We've been through it all. We've seen all the seasons. We've had our good days and our bad days. I've seen you at your best and your worst. Yes. And I was like, yeah, <laughs> this works. Yeah. This is the person whose problems I think I can live with. That was the thing. That is what you had read. That was the key, right? What? Say that again. That's so important. Everybody listen. <laughs> Everybody, I know you weren't listening. <laughs> this is the time to listen. This is how you choose your life partner. I knew that you were the person whose problems yeah. I could probably live with. Right. It's not the about my life. who's the best looking, the most money, the most successful, the most charming. Everybody can have a great time with a partner on a good day. Everybody has problems. Everybody has issues. Everybody yeah. has faults. You find somebody whose faults you can live with. Whose baggage, whose problems. Because everybody, you're never going to find a perfect specimen. And we can, even the perfect ones come with a bunch of bag. Look behind them. There's a bunch of baggage in tow. So, <laughs> so I think on today's extended episode, though, I really wanted to dive in specifically to how we decided we were going to get married and the really fun twist about who was going to propose to who and how we came to that determination. This is not the proposal story, but sort of like the yeah. pre-proposal story. We will tell the proposal story on the next installment, next installment of right our but, relationship story. So you're not missing out. No, you're not missing out at all. But it you is, can't join the extended YouTube or go to Patreon. Um, if $10 is just going to stretch you too far, mm -hmm. we understand. Totally understand. We just thank you for watching, liking, subscribing. So we finally just had this talk and I don't remember who brought it up, but we finally said, you know, let's actually you don't get remember? married. Who said it first? Me. You said, okay, then you should be telling this story. <laughs> no, at least I just want to say, I just want to say that I was the one who first was like, I think I want more. Okay, if you want to hear how we pre-decided pre -decided to who would propose, do a proposal, <laughs> go check out yeah. our extended episodes over on Patreon right here. We have a Discord server where you guys can all hang out. If you're on YouTube, you can go right here. Matthew, I think one of the most challenging parts about those books though were the quizzes. Every chapter that we read in those relationship books had a quiz at the end. You loved it. And I was so worried that it would result in telling us that we shouldn't be together. <laughs> <laughs>